Their eyes were kept from recognizing him. Then their eyes were open and they recognized him. I'm curious, and it's another sermon, why then he had to all of a sudden vanish when they recognized him. But seeing is believing. So the question I've been asking myself is how often do I see Jesus in other people? And how much more often do I fail to see Jesus in other people? Probably more than I would like to know, and certainly more than I'll tell you all. Now, I'm strangely comforted by the fact that even the disciples of Jesus, his like best friends, they didn't see Christ in the stranger they saw today. I even feel a little better knowing that they knew Jesus intimately, but they didn't see him today, not just in a stranger. They didn't see Jesus in Jesus himself. So I don't feel so bad missing the Christ in others. It's clearly easy to do. But still, I do want to know how can I do a better job of seeing Jesus in people every day and in everyday people? Luckily, today's gospel gives me some ideas. Maybe there's a lesson to take from how the two disciples finally found Jesus in the stranger on the way to Emmaus. So I looked a little more closely and eruditely. I exegeted the pericope, as they taught me to say in seminary. I don't really remember what it means. <laughs> and here's what I came up with. Number one, first of all, they saw him. They had to see him. Now, okay, I realize in a way that's like a no-brainer. You obviously have to see a person first before you can see Christ in them. They didn't see Christ in him yet, but they saw the person. So number one, they saw him on the road. Number two, they saw him. Sound familiar? I know that was number one, but it's the second thing they had to do. They had to see him with something other than their eyes. I'm reminded by the affirming statement that people make sometimes, I see you. To an oppressed population, they can say, I see you. How many times have you heard someone from a marginalized group say, I feel invisible to people? Or they'll say, it's like I'm not even here. It's so important for people to be seen. So they saw Jesus, then they saw him but not as Jesus yet. And next, they were open. Their eyes and their hearts were open enough to let his presence interrupt them for a moment. And I've been on the road to Emmaus and some guy stopped me and said, what's going on? And I didn't know him. It's like, dude, I can't talk to you right now. I'm in a hurry. Plus, lest we forget, the Roman army is looking for them. They had to be open, though, to stop and to greet him and to see him and to be open so that the divine could be seen in what was otherwise just an interruption. Then I'm reminded of something I learned in seminary that much of Jesus' work was in interruptions. So many of our gospel stories indicate that Jesus was going to a thing or he was at a thing, doing a thing, and all of a sudden some uninvited guest appeared and a new miracle unfolded. And then we got the story. So Christ appears in the interruptions, especially today. So they were open to him. They were open to seeing him, to being with him. They were open to tell him more than just the facts of their story. Um, they felt safe to be vulnerable with him because they answered his question. Here's what happened. But then they shared something personal and potentially unsafe with him. And I never caught this until I was reading it this time for this sermon. They admitted they were followers of Jesus when they said, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. I didn't realize and think about how risky that was. For all they knew, he could have been a spy for the Romans, looking for followers of Jesus to round up. They were open enough. They felt something okay enough to say to him, we would hoped he had been the one to redeem Israel. We're following Jesus. So openness is hard. It's especially hard now. It is not always safe, and I fear that it's even less safe now to be fully open. 
we do very well to decide how open we will be, with whom, and when. And they were open to the stranger on the road to Emmaus. They saw him, they stopped, they were open about their truth. Here's another thing you don't see much of. They were open to his truth also. Remember when he shared his truth with them? He said, hey, you guys are being silly. This is ridiculous. Let me tell you from Moses to the prophets, the Messiah's story. And when he shared that truth with them, they were open enough to actually listen. They were open enough to learn something, to let themselves be changed ever so slightly by something he was saying to them. They were vulnerable to him. They said their hearts were burning in them. How often am I that open? Particularly when someone's making an argument I don't think I want to hear. You don't hear of that very often nowadays. Then they invited him in even further. Stay with us. It's almost dark. But even after all that, they still hadn't seen that he was Jesus. For some reason, it took the table experience. For some reason, God often seems more evident in other people when I have eaten with them at a table. Our Sunday evenings and our Tuesday evenings here, where we sit at the dining room table and we eat whatever Chef Sam's Club has whipped up for us, there's love and there's joy and there's laughter. And it seems to me like we've all known each other for years. Now, I don't say all this to you during the meal because I don't want to sound like a middle-aged priest. Nice. <laughs> but... The Holy Spirit is very much at work, and the Holy Spirit is very much in play when we're at that table together. And when we're at this table together, too. God is palpable when I have the joy of coming up to each of you and putting the Eucharist in your hands and saying, this is the body of Christ. Not only is that true because the wafer is the body of Christ's real presence in our Eucharistic theology, but also because to me in that moment, we are the body of Christ. Our being together and our sharing that holy moment, it's so clear to me in those moments that Christ is alive. And that was when they finally saw Jesus, when they had the meal with him. It sounds old fashioned, but having a meal with someone intentionally to build community is a beautiful thing. And we missed that a lot during the COVID lockdown. I had to relearn, I think we all had to relearn how to gather, especially how to gather for meals where we had to be brave enough to take off our masks to eat, whether it was dinner or the Eucharist. And maybe that's a metaphor too take off our masks, be with each other. At the table, they saw Jesus in the stranger. So maybe they took off their masks to eat, too. They were open. They saw. They invited. They walked together. They listened. They trusted. And they gathered at the table. I wonder if from that moment forward, Cleopas and whoever the other disciple was, I wonder, did they begin to look for Christ in everyone after that moment? Did they find that in openness, in invitation, in hospitality, and at the table, no matter who they were actually with, they saw and experienced Christ? They trusted enough in the man to see Christ in him, and enough faith in him to see Jesus in him. They believed it could be him, and maybe that was when they saw him. Seeing is believing, but I think I'm learning that believing is seeing too. Maybe when we trust enough, we see Christ more readily. God, guide us to the faithfulness, the trust, and the openness we need to truly see you in everyone. Amen. Amen. Amen.